right into the thick of things and get going here for March 5th uh, Conservation Commission annual meeting or regular meeting annual meeting that would be nice wouldn't that, wouldn't that be nice <laughs> once a year <laughs> that'd be a long damn meeting uh, all right um, so you gentlemen will all here for agenda items I'm assuming yes everyone's here for agenda items no public comment good all right no public hearings no appointments statutory business Streif LLC if you gentlemen could please sign in and make sure the microphone's on when you talk thank you uh, just press it oh, you'll see it Good evening, guys. My name is Brent Cole. I'm a professional engineer with Keach Nordstrom Associates. And to my left is Connor Biot. He is the applicant. Um, I will give you a quick, quick rundown about this property. Uh, we are located at 412 DW Highway. It is map 5D4, lot 1. The property has frontage on East Chamberlain and the DW Highway to the east, as well as the Sauhegan River to the northwest. The remaining surrounding uses are residential and commercial. We are in the residential zoning district as well as the commercial zoning district. There's a small section of commercial here. Uh, we are also in the aquifer overlay, the flood hazard overlay, the wetland conservation overlay, and the elderly zoning overlay. There is 14 acres of undeveloped land here. There are two utility easements that bisect the property. One is for Merrimack Sewer and one is for Eversource. Since we are in the elderly zoning district, we are proposing a 47 unit, 55 and older community called Overlook Estates. And that is what you can see to my right. According to the town's regulations, this land is permitted 114 units. So as you can see, it's a um, dramatic decrease to, to 47. There are multi, uh, there are different buildings on this site. There are three triplexes, two single family homes, which are in that area, and the rest are duplexes. All the units will have a garage, all the units will have walkout basements. This entire development comes off of Abenaki Circle, which is a private cul de sac that's off of East Chamberlain Road. Uh, we are proposing a community clubhouse as well as a community mail station. Sidewalks are along all of Abenaki. They lead down East Chamberlain and they go on to DW Highway. A large proponent or a large uh, portion of this project is redeveloping East Chamberlain Road. It is steep, um, it comes at an awkward skew, and there's no stopping platform down at the intersection. So we plan on reducing the grade of that from 12 percent to 10 percent we're going to add a stopping platform and we're going to fix the skew by trying to create as much 90 as much of a 90 degree intersection there as possible the overlook estates um, has a closed drainage system that all leads down to an above ground infiltration pond in through this area um, as part of uh, trying to help the town's drainage infrastructure, we plan on intercepting the East Chamberlain Road and directing that stormwater to our basin so that it can be infiltrated and treated as part of the entire project. This will reduce peak flows to DW Highway. Um, it should be noted that the infiltration basin doesn't allow any stormwater to leave through the 50-year storm. Um, so there's really good sandy soils out there. We oversize the pond and really retaining everything on site. And that's there, with the addition of the water coming down East Chamberlain? Um, we intercept it about here. So there's there's a small portion of East Chamberlain that continues to do what it, what well, it does okay, today. But still, you're, I'm saying your 50 year storm, even. Yep. Wow. Yep. Good. Um, the, the project has all the appropriate landscape buffers um, according to the regulations. Uh, we have proper sediment control devices. We are proposing that this site is a no salt, no chemical de-icer site and with a green snow pro contractor uh, because of the sensitive aquifer district. The project requires an alteration of terrain permit as well as a shoreland permit. Um, because of work within the 250, 
but only within the 250. We're, we're not proposing any work within the 150 or the 50 foot buffer to Sauhegan River. Uh, because of those two permits, we are required to meet with the Sauhegan River Committee. That is later this month. And based on your recommendations for another project I did on the Sauhegan, I've hopefully I've fixed all the notes for all the nitrogen and fertilizer turf establishment. But I'm assuming you may have found a few. But we'll see. That's all I have. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. So everything, the, we start off high here because of East Chamberlain and, mm -hmm. the, and the intersection. Um, in order for us to reduce the grade on East Chamberlain, by the time we meet back up into here, this was the, the flatter spot for the intersection. This pitches all, uh, you can see, this pitches down to a low spot in through here where the stormwater is collected. This pitches back in through this area. Um, we buck grade for a while to lead back into this infiltration pond in through here. So there are deeper catch basins, but everything is collected and discharged to this point. Mm -hmm. um, on the back side of these, there are some swales that lead down to an open field in through this area um, where we'll have some area drains or flared end sections that will pick up the stormwater and direct it towards the, the catch basins within the road. The, we are proposing well, actually, we had a meeting this today with town officials, and they want all of this redone, uh, this, uh, this being the sewer easement and the access road. There will be a 16-foot wide gravel access road. There's one that exists today. It's probably 12 feet. Um, but we'll pitch everything back towards the above-ground infiltration basin so everything will get proper treatment before well, it won't discharge. Mm -hmm. In the first half of that hill, there's enough flat up there to, to reduce the grade by two degrees. You feel this through yeah. here? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh. It's it's fairly flat. Well, this isn't. It's a little bit shifted over more, but it's fairly flat all through here, and then it just twelve percent all the way yep. down, oh, right yeah. to the intersection too. There's no area to stop. Right. So we'll provide the proper um, stopping platform and then continue our ascent at ten percent. So in your there's, there's quite a bit of work associated with that. Yeah. And there's all the utilities in East Chamberlain, sewer, water. Um, so we'll have to replace all that because we're taking probably 10, I think in the worst case scenario, is about 10 feet off that, off of East Chamberlain, cut-wise. Yeah, the residents are going to have fun, huh? <laughs> At they, least there's another way out. So. Yeah, there is right. another way out. Right. But, you know, this should only improve their road. Yeah. Um, and improve the safety at the intersection of East Chamber and EW. Right. Yeah. I know this is a little out of scope, but how is there going to be any lights proposed down here? Is it a new intersection or is that just going to be a regular flow? Yeah, we're not proposing any lights at this time. I don't know if any exist today. On no, not right there. They're just just, just, uh, just north of it, uh, just north of it, a couple couple feet. But yeah. Yeah. Oh boy, <laughs> that's going to be an interesting little spot. Five o'clock drive home, you'll see people yeah. take Columbia Circle and then beat the traffic yeah. and come out on there. I, yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the safer intersection for them to go that route, too, so yeah. I'm not surprised. No, he means go up and around the traffic. Yeah, they yeah. go up and around oh, the traffic. Really? They take yeah. the left oh, onto okay. Columbia yeah. Circle, go up through the back of the neighborhood. Sorry. And then don't tell anybody. Some down, people yeah. may not know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only people without a G only people without a GPS. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got you've got that 250 foot buffer is right up to the backside of a lot of those homes. Yep. And you're aware that there's no fertilizer within 25 feet of that line. It's only limestone. Okay. Available. That's all you can. I mean, that's a that's, that's for DES. For I mean, DES. That's not that's not us. That's a DES. Yep. So you're gonna you're gonna have multiple fertilizer plans on one site. Yeah. At, at first, I was a little concerned with encroaching on the 250, but there's already the easement there. There's already an established right. gravel road there, and it was like, yeah, okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's precedent, so. Yeah, and if you are improving it and keeping the water to pitch the other way so you don't end up with gravel going down the hill, because you get steep slopes coming right over near there mm -hmm. as well. So. Yeah, yeah, we don't, we're trying to prevent any storm water from going over those. Yeah, that whole area is steep. Yeah. yeah it's an yeah. interesting area, though. It's a great area. It's a really neat, neat place to go walk. Yeah. Yeah, because if you got water running through there, you'd eventually with rutting and, and it would turn, it would ruin the whole yep. look of that. You know, so. Absolutely. So what did he miss, Mike? <laughs> did you oh, find it? Oh, there is a uh, fertilizer. <laughs> So many pages in here. Yeah, this was a, this was a yeah, right. 12 or 28. No, that's not the one. Yeah. You can, you can tell them that one while I look pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, you find stuff, Gina? I just I just found on page 12 there's a reference to low phosphate slow release nitrogen fertilizer. I don't know if you need to mark that. And I checked the, um, the plant list against the watch list and the invasive, and they're all clean. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, when do you go in front of the planning board? Tomorrow. <laughs> Why do you do that to me? I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> it's just the way that it works out. Pain in the neck. <laughs> uh, so I know they've, uh, in a number of times that we've giving them a low low nitrogen low and slow release low phosphate and slow release nitrogen um, recommendations in some of these areas particularly aquifer and in, in, in stream area they've, they've gone right to no fertilizer or, or no phosphates at all yeah so this is a and again now that you're inside that 250 buffer they're going to be very strict about the fertilizer even upstream of that so be expected yeah. page 33 discusses fertilizer application 23 28 23 33 or 23 yeah on five uh, no. number application rates number three no Applications. Yeah. Right, I mean, there's phosphorus in, in there. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? We have a number five. There's no phosphate slow release. Yeah, we have it a few few areas. And I see you got Strara on there. That's good. Yeah. 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 But it also says on number three under materials, uh, the application rate is just yeah, it's just the rate that they put whatever we propose in the materials down. So. Number three in the materials is the no phosphorus slow release. So why does it and why does it say number three initial applications? 10, 10, 10, 15, 15, 19, 19, 19. Yeah, we'll have to fix those. Yeah. <laughs> you say, you know, we have it on sheet five, we just have it everywhere. So, yeah. Trying to get up with the times with our notes and everything. Well, it makes a difference, so. Yep. No, this, this is good feedback, you know. It helps us with all our other projects as well, so. Mm -hmm. So all, all the buildings themselves will have, you know, various pitched roofs and things like that. Uh, they'll be draining to the ground or cotton gutters and things like that. Um, yep, we're not proposing any gutters at this time. Okay. Um, all all the same style building, um, mm -hmm. so the same style roofs, but yeah, different different drainage patterns. Mm -hmm. Everything going to the ground. Yeah. Okay. We're. Um, like I said, this this site is just has fantastic sand out there. So mm -hmm. anything we can do get, to get stormwater to the ground is 
important to us. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. I thought this was pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah. My only again, my only concern is your two fifty line. Yep. That's uh, you know, that's going to be a tricky fertilization, mm -hmm. long term, tricky fertilization because that's almost. And again, we've not had any left trying to put stuff like that into the deed, but in the homeowners association or something, needs there needs to be some kind of comment about where they physically where they are, just mm -hmm. realizing where they are. They won't be fertilizing their own. I mean, my parents used to live in a place like that, and they yeah, don't. It's actually, yeah, somebody takes care of that. It's them. actually probably better than a single-family home. Oh, yeah. Because homeowner association will know how to handle it, and they'll implement those and for a long time. So. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's year five when they get a new contractor mm -hmm. that comes in and just yeah. yes. puts whatever it. bag in the spreader. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's the that's the issue. Mm -hmm. You can see that happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're so close to the Merrimack River and everything else. Uh, you put, you dump it in there, and it's gonna. It, yeah. You know, it goes to lots of places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the, the sandy soil that's good at infiltrating the stormwater is also really good at Going laterally to the river. spreading yeah. that mm -hmm. fertilizer. Yeah. Yeah. I. I didn't have any many many comments at all. No. A lot of detail was good to see. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So tomorrow night, huh? <laughs> we, um, I don't believe we'll we'll be seeing any sort of decision tomorrow. We haven't right. received engineer yeah. comments yet, so it'll likely be a two meeting, if not more than that. Right. Anyone have any questions, comments? Else? No. Come on, try to think something up so he has to write more to write. Oh, <laughs> it's okay, just more to write. Kill the budget even more. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much thank for you. your time. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate you coming in. New business, Nikas. Okay. Uh, review of the DES wetlands permit for Sit Watkins Lane. You're up. <laughs> do you have the permits here? Uh, we do. Okay. Is, is anyone? Is, I know uh, Sharon. Thank you, Cindy. Cindy's not Cindy down there. Sharon sent them out. Do you, anyone get? Do you anyone want to see them? We have them? Yeah, I saw the electronic copies, but it's easier to look at a paper copy. I was trying to bring it up on my computer here. That's the second one. They're all, they're all the same. Yeah. So just the, uh, does anyone copy? There's a nice fold-out print in the back if you really want to see. What's going on? But you go right there. Yeah. Uh, 
good evening. Uh, my name is Chris Gaida. I'm a certified wetland scientist and soil scientist with Fieldstone Land Consultants. Uh, our business is at 206 Elm Street in Milford, New Hampshire, and I'm here representing Bill Lestalka and uh, Land of Ocean at 6 Watkins Lane um, for a wetlands permit uh, through DES. Um, as I'm sure you recall, we were here f quite a few months ago. Um, for the initial uh, part of this subdivision. Um, you can see highlighted in pink are the two areas that uh, we're proposing some wetlands disturbance. The area in the northern area on the top of the page is about 1,800 square feet uh, proposed impact. Um, that area that's outlined in green uh, but is white in the center is a pond. Um, it's a man-made pond and right at the southern end here where the pink is is an out existing outlet structure um, so the proposal here is to basically as part of upgrading Watkins Road Watkins Lane um, we're going to need to basically use that right of way right now there's about a 12 foot gravel um, driveway that goes to the old house a single family house that used to be there um, in order to upgrade that to the town standards um, we're going to have to impact a little bit of that pond area um, that's 1,800 square feet on the northern end. As part of this proposal, that pond is going to be utilized as uh, some drainage structure and retention basins. Um, we're going to increase the berm height. Um, I think it's about a foot or so, um, and replace and basically upgrade that outlet structure. Um, so there's about 400 square feet proposed as part of that work. Um, and that's essentially it. The the change um, there's a minor change as far as the initial plans that we came before you. I think there was about 1,100 square feet proposed on the northern section uh, through going through zoning and planning. Uh, there's been some modifications in the the road design, um, and that has increased our required impact um, to 1,800 instead of 1,100. So 700 extra square feet. On that northern end, um, but that's essentially it. All other wetlands on site are going to remain unchanged and untouched. Um, this is a, a portion of it, but you can see the other green here. So, as part of this cluster subdivision that was um, approved through the zoning board, um, we're we're able to keep all the homes uh, in a localized area and not have any other wetlands impacts. So. What are you using uh, in the northern end? What's going to be the? You're obviously lengthening out the culvert or the under the road structure. Yes. What's what's going in? So it's the same. It's a 20, <clears throat> 24 inch culvert, which is what's there now. So we're we're basically just extending that culvert, lengthening it. And it's not. It's not. Does it not drop there at all? It's it within the water when it comes in, so there's no drop. Right. Right. Yeah. There's. It's it's fairly small area over here. This this wetland watershed that's coming in here. Um, I suspect that this pond, uh, when it was created, was probably you know a wet just depression, um, you know, and they dug it out. So it's there's not a lot of flow there, but um, it is wet. It's I went back and forth on whether it's actually would be considered jurisdictional. It's man-made. Um, right. There's a lot of stuff in the RSA that you know can kind of get around some of the permitting but it's always easier to just <laughs> get everybody's input on it and you know good or bad um, I think the state appreciates that as well at least you can evaluate it thoroughly and it doesn't look like you're trying to bypass any of the regulations so um, that's kind of why we're we're going through the process here good. Where's the house going to be on, on lot 11? Where's the home proposed? Um, it's right back in here. Okay. There's, I didn't bring, um, I do have, I'm not sure if that was included. Um, I can pass this around. This was the initial submission, so it's. I think last time you were here, the. The house lots hadn't been nailed down. Yeah, the the um, 
Right, the exact home locations were, were somewhat variable, and they have been now. Um, here's yeah, topography. Yeah, it is. I apologize for not including that shit. That's they're pretty much in the same location. There's uh, the last time we were here, we were talking about, um, I think it was up maybe lot three, three or two, um, where it was getting tight against that buffer. Um, so that home has been basically shrunk in size um, and pulled forward a little bit. The driveway, the whole roadway got redesigned. The original um, design had it just shedding off onto the lots, and the commission expressed some concern with, you know, not channelizing that and maintaining it so you don't have runoff from the road going across somebody's front yard all the way to the house so that's where that ditch got installed up in here um, right in here to pick all that up and keep it you know within the roadway so that doesn't happen so now it's all channeled down towards the new pond the man-made pond right it still was before but it's it's tighter to the road so there's a ditch and it's not um, not running it onto the lots so she, it, it sheet flows over the road to get to the pond uh no it's channelized in a in a in a ditch here on each side yeah and then it gets down here through all these um there's a ditch with um stone check dams and then it gets into this treatment swale here oh okay and then it gets down into all right there's also been this <coughs> this treatment swale here added from the original plans and that picks up um the water coming off actually off of uh amherst road. yeah amherst road amherst road where before that just kind of open-ended dumped out into the pond area so we're we're treating that as well before it gets to the pond. What's the what is that about eight eight percent that grade? Uh, yes, eight percent. So tonight we're just looking for the commission's support. Um, as, as you well know, I mean, um, I'm not 100% sure whether as part of a subdivision this would be an expedited review through the state. There's some caveats. Um, but again, as I mentioned, it's, it's just a little bit smoother if we can either get the commission's comments or if they don't support it, fine. But either way, at least we've been... Uh, We've been before you and can get get your feedback on it, and the state can have that as well. So. You're just waiting for the permits signatures. You're not going back before the planning board again. Correct. Right. right. We just need to submit the permits to the state, and if the commission supports the design, then we'd love to have your signature. And if not, we'd like to have your comments. So. I move that we authorize the chairman to sign on behalf of the Conservation Commission this wetland permit application. Second. Any other comments and questions? Yeah, just briefly, um, it, it looks to me like an, an improvement to what's, what's there, considering the fact that the development is going in. I, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's well constructed and um, you know, there's some good things happening there. Uh, as, so. An improvement, obviously, too, from the last time we stayed. Yeah, yeah. So, so. we kind of knew this was coming, but you know, right? It's always a, a process, and yeah. <laughs> so, okay, Matt, you were pouring over that. No, just it's good to see this and uh, have an idea of what the lot size and where you can ride and where you can't in homes would be. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a. Uh, any more comments, questions? We have a motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Passes six zero zero. So the the uh, applications have they all have been signed by signed by the clerk already? Um, so yeah, there's been a, there was a little. Uh, was this the one that was a little backwards? Someone, yes. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> they're, they're they're gonna they're gonna take care of. Uh, 
they're going to take care of signing and changing the dates as they need to and re-signing or whatever they're going to do. Yeah. So. Well, what do you mean back? I mean, the, well, the clerk signed it before you did, but it hasn't been sent out. Is that what you mean by that? Yeah, I, I don't. They, they sent me a long email of what they need to do to correct. And I'm like, oh. great. If I sign it, I'm good. <laughs> if I sign it, yes. Okay. Right. All right. <laughs> good. All right. Yeah. So you're going to sign it and hand it downstairs? Yes. If I can get, all I really need is one signed copy back, or two would be great, and then I can get it to, or do you need, the clerk needs to sign it again? Is that? I'm, that I'm not sure. Or? I'm not sure what they had a long email of what they needed to do to. The timelines all start when the clerk signs it. Mm-hmm. Because it's clerk si so the clerk signs it uh, with the impression that everything is complete and ready to move forward. Mm -hmm. And that's when all the, the deadlines are. So when the clerk signs it, well, uh, for you, as you go forward with DES, uh, for us, if on a non-expedited, it also kicks in our 14-day review. Okay. Uh, but now that you've come to us before it's signed, you've got our input already, and DES doesn't have to even be looking for our comments. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So where we theoretically could provide, we could actually request an extension of our timeline if we really wanted to. Mm -hmm. So so I, I think they just want to get all the, the signatures in the right date stamp or time okay. stamp. Okay, so I can pick them up later sometime or whenever. So, so Gage, were you planning on leaving them? I was planning on leaving them in the, in the, yeah. in the mailbox. So, okay. so in the morning... But, the, um, you know, town staff will pick them up and, and should know to process them through. You can okay. always check with, with Diane or sure. Sharon downstairs okay. and, and ask them have they done that. So. Okay, great. Thank you. What I'll do is, too, is I'll obviously I'll email them and just say that they're signed and yeah. sitting there waiting so they know it's, you're waiting for them. All right, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. That's the other one. I took a, the reason it's bent in half like that because the drawings are right there on the table behind Matt and Cindy. If you want to see where the where they're going. Yeah, we well we just saw this project recently. Yes, we did. So that's this one's a little fresher in my mind. Yeah. Uh, are you are you proposing that one too, Chris? No, I don't think so. No. Yes, environmental consultant. Yeah. But they, Sign up. We've got this. We can sign up. No, without. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Uh, I, would, did, I was did, expecting someone to be here. I did not get the impression they were asking for an expedited review on that one. Did I miss? Did I misread? I don't think the box was checked. No, I did the. No, it's not. It wasn't, it wasn't an expedited review. Right. So, so, so basically, this is kind of a head. So you only have the conservation copy then? Yes. Right. Yeah. So this is for us to provide comments straight to DES if we choose to. Yeah. I was kind of expecting someone to. Yeah. Come. <laughs> come talk. Oh. Um. This, in case no one re remembers, this is from. I think it was almost our last meeting. The uh, Executive Park Drive, and they're putting the uh, multi-family units out there where the hotel used to be. So this is the lot that was down below where they're building that they were proposing a parking lot. And this is the bridge that we and we did we we spoke briefly about the 
precast arch that they were going to put over the road over the water to put the driveway in and also they're proposing fixing the the bridge that's back there that's been broken down for a long time footbridge footbridge that's so it's 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 over there on the map if you want to if you want to look at where it is um, So that that's the. This is the. This is where the arch is going to be. The footbridge. This is the arch right here. Right. So they're going to put. That's where the arch is going to be, so they can get people across that water, the cars, and then that's the footbridge. And there's a. Now that's where it is now, and there's a great picture of the dilapidated footbridge in your, in the packet. You want to see. The lovely state in which it's in now. That's uh, in there somewhere. That's the footbridge. Yeah, that's the footbridge now. We didn't know where it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we have uh, we have some time to make comments on this one. Um, yeah, we have we have this meeting. I think by the time our next meeting comes, we were outside we're, of our comment period. Right. So because this one's already been signed. So so we did talk about this uh, again at the, at the previous meeting, and okay. one of the one of the concerns that they addressed uh, was the fact that that was a 12 foot span I believe they're gonna put over there so it's it's reaching uh, almost two feet beyond the existing river stream bed bank now the, the precast span so the footbridge is to me is about the only thing we really need to make any concerns or comments on but yeah, so with that said, so when we were discussing the footbridge, we were talking about them putting some sort of a railing or something up in order to keep people from, you know, you know, coming off the footbridge itself, but more to keep people from, you know, stepping into the, the shoreline or the wet area near the stream bed, uh, because that stream probably uh, ebbs and flows over time and might even get dry in a dry summer. So, uh, but we don't want people walking in there. We don't want them bringing their dogs in there or animals in there to defecate or whatever else in the water, uh, or maybe in you know the hot summer cooling off. So, so I think we should ask DES to require them to put some sort of a, a railing or fencing or something. It could be fairly decorative if they want, uh, but to discourage animals from getting into the to the wet area and the edges of the wet area. So. Is that is that the only only item we're going to comment on is the bridge, the footbridge? Yeah, because yeah, I yeah I think the open culvert, open box, and yep. leaving the original material in right. place is a good thing, because that allows the current critters to continue to utilize it. So yeah, and they got a good you know two foot. There's there's not you know even right now if you go over there now there's there's water going through there but it's not a heavy flow so two a two foot sp a two foot extra span on either side it's still not there yeah. you know it's still below that so it's a nice to me a, a decent design to stay you know stay away from that stream bed yeah um, uh, your to your concern also about the bridge um, they don't address how far. They're going to stay away from the stream edges, mm -hmm. um, so I, I would like to see a comment about that. About you know, again, sp spanning, making sure they're really spanning that gap and not having a not having an impact. Uh, but that gets into now the length of that bridge is pr would be pretty significant. Uh, I think the height may be fairly significant, so they may have some guidelines that 
from BMPs that they have to reach as far as railings. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what was there was, was an old wooden bridge that fell apart. Uh, what are they planning on making that bridge out of? I mean, is this going to be another maintenance issue for for us ten years from now? So well, it's well, it'll be a maintenance issue for them because it's on their property. Well, right. right. But uh, it right. if if it's maintained. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just would almost like to see some con some of the construction. <coughs> Some of the construction details of the bridge, like what they're planning on doing for that. Yeah, you you would think though that DES would have some sort of guidelines on that anyways, or BMPs yeah. that they would enforce. But yeah, I would just express the concern and, and let um, the folks in DES yep. interpret it. I think the one good thing, it doesn't look like they'll be doing a lot of fertilizer activity out there because it's kind of a you know, wooded right. you know, canopy they, area. They, they, make, they did make a comment about public trails. Um, and it's, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not, I can't say I've gone on the other side of that, what is it, lot 76 or whatever that is over there. Have you been back there at all? Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a lot of trails back there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what kind of trails? Yeah. Are they in? Dirt bikes. Is it? Mm. So it's motorized. Mm -hmm. And mm. awful? Or? No. I mean, is it heavily used? A couple, probably. And you know right where it's from? Yep. Yeah. Mm. It's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. It, once the buildings are built, though, some of that is going to change. You hope. I doubt. Well, it depends on. Yeah, maybe some of those people are going to have their bikes too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these all have. To, they, this is going to have that under. It's got some under under building parking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can we can make note of the fact that there's currently motorized trails back there. That. You know, the but. What what are you going to do with that note? You're going to just say that you want to discourage that, or you want to I just you want to beef up the? I think it just needs you know their motor their public walking. It's just public. What's it? Public walking trails, public yeah. recreation trails. Be yeah. so, so where the bridge is going is between the two buildings, correct? Did I see that properly? It's yeah. isn't it to join the two buildings? No, it's joining the back. It's joining the back Park, parcel. Parking lot to parking it's, lot. It's going. It's there's the. That's the bridge going over to the other parking lot, and then that's the bridge, the footbridge. There's an existing set of stairs. Oh, you can't know. Okay. It's going down to a footbridge and going across to this parcel. Well, I was under the impression it was tying over here. It was tying this section to this section. No, they were they were talking about doing a trail that wa that walked in the back that allowed connection that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. There was never, there wasn't, there wasn't another. Okay. The other bridge that they were, the other thing they talked about briefly was connecting this to the road, but yeah. that failed. Yeah, okay. But that's, uh, right. Yes, that means everyone else in that neighborhood there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but that's, that's where the other bikes are. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I've seen them. Yeah. Anyone else want to look at this? So we could request that they ask them to only authorize passive, passive recreation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, due to the proximity to Natica Brook and the potential dangers that could happen, especially with the steep slopes that are in that area. That acceptable uh, comment? It's a good idea. I mean, you can, you could even say that there is activity <laughs> out there now that, yep. that we're trying to curtail.
Okay, I'll uh, I'll try to write some. I'll, get to, I'll write something up and send it out. Make sure everyone everyone likes it. But I'll add it and sign it, or I'll add it and I'll accept a motion to sign it. Um, I, I I would say that we can move to authorize you know, the chairman to. So I move we authorize the chairman to uh, take the gist of this conversation and pass that along to DES in response to this wetland permit. Second. Second. Any other comments and questions? <coughs> All those in favor? That's a six zero zero. Yeah. Right. It, part of the reason why I brought that up is I think we are coming up to the edge of our timeline because yep. it was signed in the middle of February. So. Yeah. Not not that. Even and others haven't been um, um, open to taking our comments, anyways. But okay, um, one last quick item here for for the new business. We are in receipt of the uh, invoice from Beaver Solutions for the 2018 maintenance plan. They have four. We have four devices. We, we sh we're gonna. I'm gonna have to talk to Beaver Solutions about this because they're, they're grouping up uh, both the towns and ours which is great and they're giving us a, a good a good discount so we're getting a four to six sites we're getting a 25 35 percent discount so we're getting a twelve hundred dollar bill uh, minus three hundred twenty dollars so is a portion of that the town's bill or is that our, our bill it, it, the portion of this is this is our bill and the town is also receiving the discount because okay. he's doing four for us and two for them. So his, his they're they're broken apart as the six, but we only see our four. Right. So he's, he's uh, we did we had we had no uh, no problems with it for 2017, and he's this is the proposed uh, maintenance plan for 2018. It's 960 dollars, and uh, we were we typically fund this out of uh, Fund 53. So. I will accept a motion unless anyone wants to have know more about it. I move that you that we authorize Gage to uh, sign payment for Beaver Solutions, not to exceed thousand dollars, out of Fund Fifty Three. Second. Any other comments, questions? Um, it's it's not going to see a thousand dollars. It's nine hundred sixty. It will be <laughs> so. Okay, good. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Passes six zero zero. <coughs> so I'm surprised the town only has two. Weren't there are a lot of sites identified. Yes. And they just haven't. Well, uh, identifying them and then saying, "Well, we need to do something." Some of them, yeah, they're they're problem sites, but if they flood, they flood. Yeah, they're not really impacting anything. Oh, okay. You know, so yeah. they can flood. Um, when they get, you know, Mast Road is Mast Road is there's one at Mast Road and there's one, Hanson, and that's one of well, no, that's theirs. That's the other one, Hanson. So, mm -hmm. those are the two that the town are worried about. We're worried about. Oh, okay. Great. I just thought there was more that they were. Yep. Going to do or take over. Uh, there, there's a couple other spots that they're we're, we're that we're looking at. So, because they're back, they're already they're already swimming up and down behind my house. Oh. Wow. Yeah, the three of them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, So uh, going to old business, I'm going to uh, uh, make a suggestion here. If everyone would like to do it, we're going to swap those around uh, from A to B to do the Eversource power line first, because mm -hmm. Don's sitting here patiently. <laughs> so, Don, if you want to come up, if you want to come up and join us, Don. Oh, he's staying for the whole meeting. He already said. Oh, is he? No. Yeah. Oh. No, sorry. Well, so we, we can switch it back. <laughs> no. <laughs> By the way, I misspoke. It's 40 days, not 14 days, that we have to respond. So, okay. So, 
Yeah, I thought it was. I thought they. Maybe that's the legislation that's going on, on right now, where they were trying to shorten up the timeline. So. All right, that's the one that. Yeah, this I think. Out yeah. About so. the wetlands. Yeah. Rules. All right. A um, little quick brief, brief background on this before before you go, Dawn. Um, so this is uh, late last year. Yes, late summer last year, uh, Eversource contacted us about doing some the power line reliability project and power line hardening, and that's what they've been going around town and they've been trimming back all the branches and trees or anything that can reach to the reach the power lines. Um, certainly, this winter we've had a couple couple good storms. Um, I've not been without power at all this winter. Some brief little blips, and that was it. So when you go look back historically. Uh, we've had some you know six eight days without power so I'm um, apparently what they're doing is working um, but they contacted us about working through uh, the I think I can't say the numbers of their car corridors they number them and but this is the corridor that runs in behind Horse Hill um, and they went going through there and they explained the project to us and I came back here and explained it to you guys and then they started the project and uh, it's a little bit more than we expected it to be, mm. yeah. <laughs> and what we were kind of—I don't want to say—led to believe. I mean, they—they mm. they were very close to it and knew exactly what they were going to do. And you know, maybe I didn't ask the right questions, or—but uh, it, it's a pretty aggressive project. They've done a lot of work back there, and now we've got uh, apparently a new access point for Horse Hill. Is that, is that a good way of saying it, Don? <laughs> Uh, <coughs> it's a uh, ATV super highway from the estimation. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, for those not familiar, Dawn of Liberty, 5 Danforth Road. Uh, proud to be serving on the uh, Horse Hill Nature Preserve Subcommittee. And uh, on Monday, February 12th, <coughs> I was doing a hike with a, <coughs> a good friend of mine, Bruce Peterson. And uh, we were in the area of the uh, Horse Hill Summit Trail. And I'm just going to pass this old map. This, uh, this old map shows the, uh, the easement that I outlined in green. Uh, the uh, yellow uh, is a parcel that belongs to uh, PSNH slash Eversource. Uh, while we were hiking, we were hearing uh, some banging. Uh, it was an odd noise, and it was like uh, bang, bang, bang. Pile driving? Bang, bang, bang. Uh, and uh, wasn't sure what it was until we got to the part of Horse Hill Summit where it meets up with uh, uh, near pole 115 under the power lines. Uh, looking out easterly, I could see uh, there was dump truck after dump truck, and they were backing up, dumping stone, gravel, and when the uh, back of the dump truck would go up and the, uh, oh, the gate right. in the back would open up would and all came down. out, then it would slam, slam like yeah. two or three times. And it was, you know, if you didn't know it was that, uh, it was a bit of a surprise. So uh, it kind of caught me off guard. I've got some pictures here that uh, you could just pass. There's a folder just with pictures of the aerial. Uh, Bruce and I walked uh, up to that area, and uh, I happened to uh, find a... Uh, uh, a site supervisor by the name of uh, Chris Edgar. Uh, I'm not sure if he was with Blue Rock Corporation or with uh, or Blue Rock Construction or with uh, uh, Eversource, but uh, he had uh, a short time prior to our or prior to both Bruce and I getting there, uh, having dealt with a uh, an abutter. So uh, he was uh, not in the best of moods, having dealt with uh, an abutter that was unhappy with what was going on, uh, because apparently the uh, 
the notice that went out, I got the copy that went from the uh, the uh, development office and also got forwarded to Public Works. And uh, this was the notice. Uh, anyways, uh, <clears throat> Chris Edgar is the one. Both sides of that, the, the front picture and everything? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chris Edgar is the one that uh, I asked several questions, and he said uh, he was being a little defensive at that point. He was saying all the permits, everything's been pulled, everybody's been notified, uh, and we're uh, we're doing uh, what we're authorized to do. Uh, I did ask him if there was uh, any plan to uh, put anything at the uh, beginning from uh, Natticook Road into the uh, right-of-way area uh, in terms of a gate, uh, construction equipment, uh, anything to prevent uh, ATVs, uh, all-terrain motorcycles, uh, pickup trucks, whatever, from going in. And... Um, he said no, uh, which uh, kind of surprised me. But uh, anyways, uh, when, when I got home, I, uh, I did a little more research, uh, figuring uh, this just doesn't seem right, that this happened the way it, it did. And I know I sent you uh, uh, a couple texts at the time because <laughs> I wasn't at my computer. <laughs> in terms of what's going on. Uh, but I started with the uh, Horse Hill uh, Master Plan, uh, where it, it talks about uh, the PSNH easement requirements under 7.2. And uh, there's just uh, one paragraph that I'm going to uh, address here. It says, within the transmission line easement areas on the Horse Hill Nature Preserve property, Peace and H has the right to construct, operate, and maintain power lines and all associated structures and support facilities. It also has the right to patrol the easement areas and to cut trees, clear brush, and remove any obstacles. The town has the right to use the land within the easement area so long as it is used in a manner consistent with the easement agreement. So then I knew the next thing I had to do was look for the easement agreement, which uh, ended up being harder than I thought because uh, I went to the development office and uh, started with the uh, parcel that uh, PSNH owns, which on the tax map <coughs> is uh, referred to as uh, 61 Natticook. And uh, uh, as a sidebar, uh, it was interesting because I was just at that point where I was gathering information. Uh, I did see the, the net assessment on that property that PSNH owns uh, was assessed at 156900 with the 2016 assessment. Uh, 2017... <coughs> That assessment went down to eighteen thousand nine hundred, uh, <clears throat> which a tax difference of uh, uh, in two thousand sixteen there were two payments, one of eighteen hundred and one of uh, seventeen hundred. In two thousand seventeen, the payments were one hundred ninety four dollars and two hundred seven dollars. Separate issue, but that's just a point that I'm, I'm bringing up uh, in terms of my investigating and finding out things. Um, I did talk to uh, uh, Laurie Barrett uh, at Public Works, and um, uh, she was also, she was the one that gave me the, uh, the copy of the postcard, uh, and uh, and she's the one that said, uh, this is what we got. This is the only notification that we got. And uh, she was concerned because with all the heavy truck traffic on Greenspawn Road, 
they had a lot of work that they had to do on Green's Pond. It was, it was really in rough shape after all those trucks of uh, two and three days of uh, delivery of uh, stone and, and gravel. Uh, there was some deep ruts. I don't know if anybody was aware or, or traveled that area at that time period. But she said there were... DPW fixed that? Uh, Greens Pond Road is a, is a town road. But no, but and DPW uh, fixed it, the, not, the, not the PSH. Uh, they, <coughs> they fixed the mud areas. Uh, there was some stone that appeared in Greens Pond that wasn't there before. Whether that stone came off one of the trucks, I don't know where that stone came from. I didn't witness the stone being... Uh, put on a couple sections of Greenspawn Road. But they had to address it, but there was nothing that could stop them from having those trucks go on Greenspawn Road because there's no weight restriction right. on Greenspawn Road. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I went to the registry <coughs> of deeds. I had to uh, get some... Uh, some backup information on a book and page, uh, which there was a missing page on on what the uh, the town had for the parcel that uh, uh, PSNH had purchased, uh, and I I got some other information, but again, the easement agreement per se for the town of Merrimack. Uh, I was still searching for. So uh, <clears throat> I did also talk with uh, Paul McCauley uh, and some of his staff. They were helpful, digging up some information. <clears throat> but what was uh, interesting is, uh, and Paul had a good memory, because he said uh, there was a meeting where Eversource did a presentation to the uh, town council. Yep. That meeting was May 11th. And um, I've got the approved uh, minutes. There's a couple things that came up uh, that I picked out of those minutes that I think is relevant here. Uh, first, Councillor Boyd remarked that the W-157 and the 380 go through two important pieces of property owned not only by the town of Merrimack, but the Conservation Commission. Now, the 380 is the line that goes through Horse Hill. He questioned if any cross-jurisdiction cooperation uh, has been done with the Community Development Department or the Conservation Commission regarding the work that will be done on those properties, and if site reviews have been done with either group regarding mitigation that needs to be done as it relates to some of the wetlands, particularly at the Horse Hill Nature Preserve. Mr. Stanek, who was with Eversource, noted he is familiar with both properties and he stated work is at a minimum in both sites. In preparing for the project, they had the environmental scientists go out and delineate wetlands which manifest themselves in project lands. They have best course of action procedures in place as well as avoidance measures in place to preserve those. Ms. Hoodlett and Mr. Logan, they're both associated with Eversource, will be reaching out to the Conservation Commission as well as the town. The town provides the resource and they will go out and meticulously walk about every tree to be removed on town property, just as they would with a private property owner. Uh, these are very detailed minutes. I, I, was, I was impressed, whoever takes the minutes. <clears throat> Councilor Boyd question if FERC is providing any type of regulatory oversight or if it's simply a matter of notifying FERC of upgrades being completed. Mr. Stanek responded of the lines applicable to Merrimack, there was only one FERC-related line, which is the 380, which is the one going through Horse Hill. 
Councillor Boyd spoke of the upgrades on the 380 and asked if that would increase electrical capacity going through that line. Mr. Stanek stated it would not. It just ensures the electricity will be transmitted safely and that all those structures and facilities are up to spec and standard in a storm hardening capacity uh, can withstand the elements of nature and there are no uh, negligent circumstances. Councillor Boyd questioned if the town manager and the team could be asked that the schedule of dates and times when received be put on a Nexel alert. I'm not sure if I'm <laughs> Nexel yeah. alert. I'm not familiar with that is. Vice Chairman Rothhaus commented if the town manager is notified of the schedule, that can be done. Now, a point uh, concerning the uh, comment by Mr. Stanek. Uh, it's interesting because when I talked with the site supervisor, uh, Chris Edgar, uh, he did indicate uh, that there was going to be more electricity coming through those lines. And uh, I've got a witness to that. Uh, Bruce Peterson was with me at the time. So not sure if we're, we're getting uh, conflicting information. Nixel, if you're interested, um, you can sign up for it. At, I believe it's nixel.com. You put your telephone number in, and then they text you alerts when things okay. are happening. Like if the well, I get bad. that from Eversource when there's a storm coming. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they'll do traffic <laughs> accidents or things. It's it's just a whenever they get the system. info, regardless yeah. of the time of day. Yeah. Oh, watch out. Okay. Well, the one the one thing I did find out is the town uh, posted information about this work and the helicopter uh, coming up and down the line on Friday the 9th and they started the work on Monday the 12th. Uh, my concern is is threefold. One, the uh, communication uh, way it, it, it came about, uh, the way I had to dig up information, uh, the fact that the Horse Hill Subcommittee had a meeting a couple weeks before this project started. And I remember we were talking about uh, some of the trees that were taken down and were those trees going to stay there? Oh, remember right. Remember we were talking yes. about that? Yes. And I remember talking to you also about the <clears throat> easement agreement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and whether we had to... Because I asked, and that was when Jackie said they can pretty much do what they want with the trees. And if you guys remember that. Well, yeah. I have I have come across different wording on different deeds with regard to a so-called <coughs> easement agreement. Uh, this is one that's probably the clearest that I've come up with, and Paul McCauley sent it to you right. as well as myself late this afternoon. Uh, Oh, it didn't go out to everybody? We can fix that. Uh, it says, accepting and reserving to the grantor, and the grantor at the time was PSNH, its successors and assigns, the grantor's presently existing electrical transmission lines located on the land here by conveyed together with the right and easement to construct, repair, rebuild, operate, patrol, remove said lines and other overhead underground lines consisting of wires, cables, ducts, manholes, poles, towers, together with foundations, cross arms, braces, anchors, guys, grounds, and other equipment for transmitting electrical current and or intelligence over, under, and across the land hereby conveyed. This reservation shall include the right to clear and keep clear said land of all trees and underbrush by such means as the grantor may select to remove all structures and obstructions found within the limits of said land uh, which interferes with said lines. By acceptance of this conveyance, the grantee 
for itself and its successors and assigns covenants and agrees with the grantor that it will not erect or maintain any building or structure of any kind or nature or change the existing grade or ground level of said land by excavation or filling without the written permission of the grantor. It's interesting that it's worded that way, yet we can't ask the same of them with regard to what they did. Nowhere have I seen where they can put in an unpaved road, essentially. Um, I hope the pictures gave people a, a, an idea of what, what was put in because, uh, again, I see that as, uh, as an issue with uh, uh, activity that we don't want coming into the preserve. Uh, probably coming more so from the other side of Natticook Road where you've got that part of the easement that ends up uh, out by the horseshoe fishing game and, and beyond. There seems to be a lot more uh, all-terrain vehicle activity there, but I can see that coming down, especially they, when they see what they have available to them. And Matt, I think you were around at the time where there was attempts I don't know if it was PSNH at the time or Eversource to try to get some gating or something to stop, even if they just put it up and had the key for themselves. Um, the problem now is what used to be uh, a small area we had with a sign that was kind of hidden uh, was wide enough for a, uh, uh, a vehicle a PSNH vehicle to get in and park and check their lines now is about four to five times wider at the entry point and then it narrows down to roadway for the trucks that they have they have working there at, at this point so again my first point was was the communication I I see there was breakdowns here from the top on down and here I am from the bottom working up trying to improve that communication so that this type of thing uh, doesn't happen because the next two things I'm going to mention uh, I think could have been avoided if some of us at the Horse Hill committee level were involved because the next two things involve uh, what I touched on briefly already is having some sort of gate to prevent any outside ATV activity from coming in and I, I can see it's, it's a lot more difficult to try to get somebody to commit to do something after the project is started <laughs> they're probably not going to agree to any kind of gating or any closing off of that area. We haven't asked. I mean, they, they, they initially told us, you know, if there's something we can do while we're out there, let us know. I mean, they, we, because we did, we talked about having them move some boulders and they're like, we'll have the equipment there. If we need to move stuff, let us know. So, I mean, we can ask. Uh, it would be good to ask. And if, if they don't want it on their property, uh, the other option is put it at the start of uh, the Old Kings Highway where they've got their road, but if they had uh, a gate with a key that at least was a barrier for some of those ATVs from just being able to come through, uh, that's another option. But Ideally, it would be best to have the gate at Natticook Road uh, because if that area can be gated, the rest of the area uh, to the right, if you're looking at it uh, in a westerly direction, the, the west, rest of the area to the right of that opening is uh, not as easy to get into, uh, into Horse Hill or into that, uh, that 
uh, property that at that point is Eversource's and then it becomes the easement. And the, and the third and last thing I just wanted to bring up is uh, uh, I saw an email where there was a response from somebody and uh, I think uh, somebody reached out and it might have been uh, based on my email to you uh, and it uh, indicated uh, here is some general info from Eversource. We will be working on structures 108-109, that's on the eastern side of Natticook, but 111, 112, and 113 off Natticook Road, uh, that is on the side leading toward Horse Hill. Uh, we will return late in 2018 to replace structure 119 off of Peasley Road. We will have signage on Old Kings Highway between structures 112 and 113 to warn of construction work ahead. As of this afternoon, and with those trucks out there uh, working in that area, there's no signage. There's two points where Old Kings Highway crosses their unpaved road and there's two points where there's a crossing where it's the uh, uh, loop trail whether you're coming from one direction or the other it would mean that there needs to be four signs there warning mountain bikers warning runners warning people uh, walking their dog uh, it's it's just crazy that they have to wear hard hats even when they're in their vehicles and yet here we get a comment that they're going to put signage there's no signage and uh, they're weeks into this project and i went one more time today i went this afternoon mid-afternoon they were still working it's not as if they were shutting down um so I have a problem with that. Uh, I don't think that we're looking out for the best interest of the users of, of the preserve. If, if that's going on and we're not at least putting a warning, we, we don't have anything at the uh, kiosk and we have nothing on their part uh, at the point of uh, possible interaction with a truck crazy any questions <laughs> <laughs> no I mean I can, I'm I can get a uh, letter off to these guys and ask uh, what's her name uh, Elizabeth LaRocca who's our contact um, you know, those questions in, in particular I mean you, we've got we've got we got four you know two locations that loop trail and and oking okh that that are getting crossed by this you know heavy equipment and it's a, that's a heavily used area so you know there needs to be some temporary signage put up or something you know eight ten feet in inbound of, of the crossings saying you know warning of construction ahead yep and uh you know i i'm you know i asked i asked for a schedule and you know you saw you saw the email it's you know, yep. hey, late you know early in february and the trouble is they sent it to me late in february so it doesn't really do us any good so uh yeah i think uh they they certainly jumped on this and uh, i was amazed at the speed that that road was uh was put in uh they started on a monday um i don't know if they completed it by wednesday afternoon but uh come thursday um I walked that area and uh, and they were done yeah. now the uh, the one concern that I saw mentioned in one of the documents is uh, uh, the intent of when they're done taking all that gravel taking all that stone out yeah it's gonna return it, it to its and uh, removing I, I, it I, I, I'm, okay. I, find I, that hard, I find that hard to believe. I can't yeah. picture that either. Matter of fact, yeah. I think that'd be doing more damage. I mean, that's one, that's one of the reasons they leave the logs in there because dragging them out would cause more damage than just leaving them there, letting them rot. 
So I can't imagine they want to go back and try to scoop all that. You know, they've they've compacted all that gravel. And they want to go try to rip it up. And that's going to cause a lot of damage. I I, I think we will be worse off yeah. than. I think we've got a problem right now, but I think we can deal with the problem. Yep. But if that occurs also, I think we've got a worse problem. Yep. Now, the one thing I don't know what's going to happen, uh, and maybe you can pursue this as well, is uh, what's going to happen with towers like 114 and 115 that are just on the other side of the wetland and then going up the hill towards the Horse Hill Summit. Uh, matter of fact, where that Horse Hill Summit trail starts from the power line entry going up that spine, I think you know where I'm talking about, Matt? Are they going to at some point attempt to put a road similar to what they've done here through the wetland, up the hill to get to those towers? I didn't see that addressed here, yeah, but I, I think I think it's something that should be asked for future reference uh, before all of a sudden we we have that construction occurring and and getting the notification uh, weeks after that. Oh, by the way, this is what we're doing. I can't believe they're trying to go up that hill. That's that's if I'm thinking that that's the hill out of that little pond. That's a Wait. steep. Which in previous years has been completely flooded out, depending yeah. on the beaver activity. But the, the steepest thing that they're, the steepest thing that they have to access, they're already going up, and that's from the low point of the swamp, the backside of the swamp, yeah. up towards Natticook. That that grade right there is, mm -hmm. I mean, that pitches, yeah, thirty percent, and they hardened that. And they dug it out at the top. Mm -hmm. They already did that. I mean, they did that before they put any gravel on the road. They dug dug it out and kind of graded it. And I don't know if you noticed the wetland that they flagged. I only found one spot. Yeah, it's, you know. It's the size of this table area. Yeah, that's the only wetland they found, apparently. I mean, with all the mention about it in the email that I got, I said, wow, well, it looks like they're really taking the conservation effort here to the max and and then finding what they did. I mean, it's... <laughs> I can't believe, uh, you know, if there's a turtle or a snake that they find in that area that they're going to stop construction. That... That will not happen, not in my estimation. Yeah. No. As I said, it's, it's, what we, all we can do is we can bring it up to them and, and ask them what, what their plan for reparation is and when they're done and you know, how they're going to lock that off so we don't have an ATV highway through there or, or just four wheels in general. I mean, that's a, like you said, that's a substantial road. You're going to get people, you know, Jeeps and whatever. And what's their plan? Yeah. Are they going to leave the road, or are they going to try? Right. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. What's what's the long-term plan for that road? Hey, I, mean, I think you should you should copy the town council and yeah. the town manager on any yeah. correspondence. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's a because technically they own the land, we manage right. it. Right. So, and at, and at this point, I mean, what, what's there now? I mean, the concern isn't just ATVs and and you know jeeps. You you could drive a Prius from Natticook to Loop Trail right now. I yeah I'm yeah. yeah I mean it's it's anything yeah it's not just ATVs. you don't you don't need a four wheel drive vehicle you no. use any car yeah. yeah we never thought we'd have a parking lot for uh, people to go to the uh, Spalding Foundation either but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. and now we do yeah. now we do uh, yeah. it's it's on the other side of the uh, the right of way but uh, it's wide enough for cars to park diagonally. Uh, against the bank um, okay uh, thank you very much for listening uh, I would say the most important thing first off on their part is getting that signage up um, and I think uh, I will feel better that uh, as they're doing work there at least our people the users of the 
the area will at least be forewarned. Okay. And uh, maybe we should talk to Peter about uh, doing our part in terms of the Horse Hill Nature Committee to uh, put something at the uh, kiosk. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Definitely. That would be helpful. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, thank you, Don, for you know thank all, you. all this work. I appreciate it. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks for alerting us <laughs> to the, the road. Sorry about the screaming. No, no. <laughs> it's always you, too. Why, does, why is it always end up being having, having to you have to deal with this crap? I, oh, I know. <laughs> Poor Don. Yeah. He, he discovers everything. Yeah, I know. You know? So. The, no, I'm again, not going to. This is the one year anniversary of the. Uh, oh, jeez. Oh, yes, the skitter. Oh, the skitter. Oh, I know. It's always something. That means next year around this time, we're going to have to scope out the area like a month it comes in, in advance. It comes, it comes in threes, right? Yeah. We're, we're gonna, it's going to happen. We're once. like, we're what's one next? more thing happen to us, right? We could be there to catch it. Don, thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, Don. All right. Um. Oh, oh no, we, we sw I swapped around. Yeah. Old business. Um, the Scalar Waterfront Park and Town Boat Landing. Planning for a cleanup. Something you want to talk to, Mike? Yes. It um, seems like the vast majority of the cleanups on the town land, as you know, we noticed when we went out there, right? I mean, and we got to find a time. Uh, when the water's lower to go out there uh, I you know and I'd be happy to talk to the town Eileen just you know to try to get their cooperation uh, if we can come up with a, a good time I, I got a feeling the water's gonna be high for quite a while now <laughs> <laughs> with a little extra dose coming next couple of days yeah so I know are we talking about June or yeah, probably late May, early June. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked originally, too, about um, contacting uh, AB, AMBEV, about their, they had a group that wanted to come out and yes. be part of this. Yes, I can, I can contact, yeah, I, have, so I have that contact. I can yeah, I mean, because uh, this, if you, when you look at it, this, you know, ultimately goes right up to their property, you know, for the most part. You d accesses and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's the same. There's somebody, but th this would be, you know, something potentially they might they might want to be part of, because it goes yeah. it goes pretty much right up to the property. I know. Property. Talking to him, he was really interested in like yeah. having that right. field day to do a cleanup, and I was like, you know, you guys could get maybe even could get maybe even more involved. It's going to be a field weekend. <laughs> it's not going to be a field day. Yeah. it's going to be a long. It's going to be more than a day. I think his interest is, I mean, I is yeah. just that only. Well, you know, that's what that, I mean. Yeah, but can, you never know. We can find out. Yeah, we can. Doesn't have to ask. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Bass, and we'll ask again. Yeah. Yeah. So we're thinking late, late May. Uh, yeah, I'd say May, June. 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 Well, this is your project, man. Where are we going? Yeah, June. June. Okay. <laughs> so, um, something really good having to do with this came out of the Winter Carnival. Huh? Um, there's always a table set up in the winter carnival for the um the folks that do the the flying eagles they're oh, the yeah. folks that uh fly yep. the model planes oh, yeah. and helicopters oh, yeah and that's right yeah they'd, they'd be good people to get involved they're sure. very interested in helping out absolutely yeah absolutely they they've wanted to clean that up for years and they've you know they do their part in their area to keep their end clean but they're like if that especially after what's been going on now i mean just as soon as you get past there they must have some mess. drones that they can fly around over there and get some license plates <laughs> yeah, oh <my> God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe some warheads too <laughs> uh could you give me uh, their information contact information yeah yeah, I... yeah. Great. there it is <laughs> Yeah, should snap a picture of yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yes, and I'll I will contact them too. Um, try to get um, uh, in Bev. Uh, I'll contact the 
the uh, butter. That's the uh, con what's his name? The Mike. contractor. Yeah, Mark Tudarski. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'll contract the uh, lady from Historical. Anita. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's probably maybe we'll come up with a firm date a little later. But yeah, June sounds good. I know so I'm going back from your. Oh, I'm, no, I'm going to wait in, in sometime in May or June. This is my son's Do it sometime when you're home. Yes. Okay. <laughs> 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 it's just going to get it's just going to get worse. Yeah, my son's graduating with his PhD sometime around there, in California. Um, yeah. So we'll come up with a date, and as soon as I find out when I have to go to California. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and yes, I'll get and I'll get this going, and we can talk about it in the future. But yeah, but. I mean, what, 90% of the cleanup is on that town property? Yeah, 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 there's a lot of it. So we got to get the town's got to get involved with yeah. this. It'd be good to, if we arrange it right, like we did out on Greater Woods, yes. we could have them show up with their trucks. That, that worked out great. Everything. We just have that underpass. I was going to say, can they get under the underpass? Yes. They yeah. can yeah. unpack. Even if they we, couldn't, they'd, get a, they'd be able to get a bucket under there. And, the, yeah, I mean, we yeah. we were there. They got a full size. They got a wrecker under there. Okay. To get yeah. that truck out. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get the couch out. The mud was double. frozen when the yeah. when you parked on the <laughs> riverbank. Oh, that's and then right. It got warm and. I remember you telling me about yeah. that. Um. Yeah. So okay, we'll come. We'll make a June date. Uh, and to be continued. Um. Yeah, I mean, we'll plan for a June date. Um, do you have DPW's contact info? Uh, if you have sp specific numbers, if you could get that to me, that'd be great. Because uh, Lori would be the one to contact for that. Okay, and I'd have to and talk uh, to Eileen, right? Yes, we're going to have to contact with. We're going to have to contact through. I don't know. Does that go through town council? Let's go through, I guess it goes through Eileen, but we'd have to end up going through. Somewhere, I think we should get off through town council and let them know what's going on because that's the boat ramp. A, that's a that's another controversy right there. They want to move the boat ramp down mm -hmm. the other direction. So well, that's a good thing. Yeah, I think so. But we w yeah. we will. Yeah, we'll talk to Lori and see what kind of permissions she needs. She needs right because yeah. she might just say Kyle is all that she needs, right? Yeah. If if there needs to be a cost share with this. We should explain that it is town property that we're fixing as well. Yes. That we can cost share our parcel. I mean, man, it's a mess. Yep. Yeah. And they know it. Yeah, they do know it. Yeah. Yeah, we told them. And we showed them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, my thought is early June, you get too much. If you do it in May, you run into college graduations. If you do it mid June or later, you run into high school graduations. Yeah, early. And then people bugging out for summer. Yeah. Right. So the first half of June would be the ideal. first weekend in June is probably the right thing to do. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> that black fly season. Yeah. We're going to California. Is that black fly season? Uh, probably. Probably. <laughs> it's New Thanks. Hampshire. When's not yeah. black yeah. fly season? It's getting earlier every year. <laughs> the bears are already. Already, awake. already found Tex. Yeah. Oh, the bears are awake. Oh, I saw oh, yeah. it on I mean, WRNU. I've already had. I've already, you know. Oh, I had like six on me yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Must have walked through a nest or something. And the chippies are awake. It's too. it's the babies you need to worry about now because they're teeny weeny. Oh, these were all. I don't think these were babies, but they had like red on them or something. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, wood ticks? Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they look different than the ones I've so seen this in the past. I should be able to. Yeah. Nail this down by in April sometime. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any other comments, questions? No? Anybody else? Okay. Uh, how's, is anybody, uh, are those, I haven't been down there, those roadblocks, the, the traffic? ATV traffic? How's that? Anybody know? I've not been back down. There. I haven't been down there. Either. I went back down. I haven't gone down to check and see if any more signs are even up. Yeah. So it's not that hard. I suppose to take a quick trip down there and look. But 
All right. Uh, moving on to other business. We have uh, subcommittee updates. We have any? We had any meetings? Is that last meeting? Mm -hmm. uh, cool. That's quick. Uh, the minutes. We want to review the minutes of February fifth. Get a chance to go over. How are you? Mm -hmm. I'll attend a motion, Gina. Okay. <laughs> I will make a motion that we accept the minutes, Merrimack Conservation Commission minutes of February 5th, 2018, with changes as follows. What a rip. Okay, so I have on page two, line 15. Um, this is one of a couple of places where it says dentition, which I believe should say detention basin. Yeah. Is there so okay, because I was going to say I don't know what a dentition basin would be. So on line 15, page two, that should be detention, D E T E N T I O N. Page 3, line 24, um, on the surface is still less runoff, should say than rather than then. On page 3, line 25, at the end of that line, um, again change it from de dentition to detention. Well, say that one again, sorry. On page 3. Line 25, change it from. Oh, okay. Yeah, change it dentition to detention. On page 4, line 2, detailing include washing of cars instead of detailing included washing of cars. It says also, will the car detailing include washing of the cars? On, la, on page 5, line 42, they will not be going out to, instead of preform, it should be perform. On page 6, line 5, Sauhegan River, get rid of the first G. <laughs> on page 6, line 17, um, reimburses spelled incorrectly. On page 6, line 40, Commissioner before Rosati is spelled incorrectly. Um, on page 7, line 22, do we want to capitalize the S in Scouts or just leave it with a small s? There's two places, considering it is either Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. Either way? Okay. I'm not sure. I, I would imagine it's probably a proper name, the yeah. Boy Scouts or the yeah. Girl Scouts, so it should be capitalized. So I would capitalize on line 22, page 7, and also on page 7, line 23, just capitalize the S in Scouts. And on, la, on page 8, line 27, Counselor, before flood is spelled incorrectly. <laughs> And on line 34, capitalize the R in registration. And that is all that I had. <laughs> but other than that, Sharon did a great job because these minutes are hard to take. Mm -hmm. So, and when you, especially when you're not typing them up, she did an excellent job getting these typed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything else? Yeah. No, you got all mine. Hey. <laughs> Plus. <laughs> no other comments, Shop. questions? <laughs> all right. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the minutes as corrected? Oh, Aye. Did anyone Aye. second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, we did? Oh, I don't second. think anyone seconded. Oh, okay. yeah. but I'll, I'll second. All right.
And now Second, we can... And now <laughs> anyone has any questions? Okay. Pass six uh, zero zero. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere we get it. All right. Uh, no members of the public and commissioner comments. Cindy. Uh, probably too late for this Thursday, but uh, we are in town meeting season, so all of you are watching this. There's the deliberative session for the school uh, district is this Thursday, the town, no? 8 to 14 inches of snow, let's see. Are we still yeah, right. on it? Okay, oh. well, it's scheduled <laughs> for Thursday. The following week is the uh, town. You're going to be addressing school? Am I? Yeah. Something to say? No? Okay. Sorry. Not that I'm aware of. Oh, okay. yeah, right. <laughs> right. If you're on the schedule. You never know. <laughs> no. Just an FYI. Yeah. That you're letting this know. Yeah. Yes. Don't Don't let letting letting the, the people know that they need to, it, is, it is government of we the people. If we the people don't participate, then we the people have to live with what the rest of the people who did show up decide. <laughs> that is true. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That is true. So, we don't like so that. So you lose your right to make a comment. Yes. So zip it. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I, you have. You, have you, you read the Merrimack Forum? Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> my point. That's where people do their comments. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that got shut down too. So that's shut down. Yeah. Oh, we did. There's yeah. a new one. There's like probably 23 new ones. About. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. You mean the bad yeah. one got well, shut there's down? Big bastard trial. There's like 23 yeah. different Merrimack forums floating around out there. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh wow. Wow. Whatever. I, yeah, I guess you have okay. to be on Facebook to see them, and I'm not, so I don't get to see so them. So this is the school deliberative session? School, school deliberative yes. session. Then the town is next week, and at the end of the month, on Tuesday the 27th, is the Merrimack Village District. So. We, where are these all being held now? Are they all at most Jamie's? Of them are, most of them are at Jamie's, right. Okay. James Master Kohler Upper Elementary School in the all-purpose room. Okay. Do you know, I know, I remember seeing the one for and um, Merrimack Village District, but the other ones are at like six thirty-seven, or I believe they're seven o'clock. Okay, but, uh, sounds good. Well, so I'm you sure can people... find them on the appreciate websites for each yes. of the three municipal bodies that we have. Yes, uh, but I recommend that you participate, let your voice be heard. If not, your silence is also will be heard. And also, from what I understand from Merrimack Village District, the, this is not something that you vote on at the town ballot. You have to actually go to the deliberative Correct. session and you have to vote there in person. Yep. So if you do not show up and mm. vote there in person, you don't right. get a say. It's an old town, it's mm. an old style town hall, mm -hmm. town type meeting, sorry, mm -hmm. town, yeah, town meeting. Mm. So, so yes, you have to show up. You do not necessarily have to get Merrimack water to show up. You do have to be a registered town voter to participate and speak, okay? And there is talk about put, g trying to give the Merrimack water responsibility to the town is what I understand from the water page. So this is going to be a lively meeting. Yep. So people should go. So, so, that, so I just want to remind people that this is the time of year that you do your, your due diligence and you participate in your town government. Mm -hmm. so, so please do. So shovel out and go. So, uh, <laughs> on another note, uh, <laughs> the well, hopefully they will they will um, reschedule it and not do it, and therefore not allow people to participate. So, right. I, you would hope that they would take that action. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, uh, on the 22nd of March, is our rescheduled opportunity to be in front of the town council to discuss the process for Chapter 111. Uh, they wanted to have it this Thursday, but I said no because I was going to be at the deliberative session for the school district, not at the town council meeting. What so, day is that again for 111? Thursday the 22nd. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. That's all I have. Gina, do you have anything to add? Well, um, Last Saturday, Matt and Cindy and I were at the Winter Carnival, and a wonderful time was had by all, despite the fact that there was no snow, um, <laughs> and children were very happily rolling down the hill instead of sledding down the hill, and, and Wolfie and Dante were there, the, the, the dogs that look like wolves, and they're always great fun to be with. And I did raffle the ferry door off and made a whopping $12, so we have learned that 
people don't want fairy doors so much as they want hot dogs and chili. That is what people want, hot dogs and chili. And we can't serve hot dogs and chili because Merrimack friends and family serve hot dogs and chili. So we'll think of something else for next we year. We could. We could serve hot dogs and chili? I told them that I was going to undercut them next year and sell <laughs> hot dogs for 175 <laughs> he did. They didn't know what to they say. Think that was funny. Yeah, they were like. <laughs> <laughs> They've been doing that for years. I, I think that that's like a, a deal that they have with Parks and Rec. Are there were a lot of people. The there were quite a few and people. Yes. And, and interesting. The, we're going to name Matt as our goodwill ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people were from not from Merrimack. The person that ended up winning the um, very door was from Londonderry. Mm -hmm. oh. So I need to mail that to her because we can't seem to connect. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's very interesting. A lot of people um, on the forum were like, "No, I'm from you know oh. wherever," oh, wow. but it's a nice family day. Yeah. Lots yeah, of stuff to good, do. My, my kids used to really like that. Yeah, yeah, the ice sculpture. The ice sculpture was very cool. Yep, cool. they made Batman in the Batcave, mm -hmm. which was very fun. So hopefully next year we'll have snow, but. Everybody should come next year so they can say hi to Wolfie. Yeah. Wolfie's <laughs> awesome. Wolfie and Dante is not as interested in all the people, but Wolfie is like, yeah, pat me and love me. So, and she have potato chips on your face. <laughs> right. There was yeah, there was a one, little kid. Yeah, one little one went up and, on and, and got Dante's a good like, face <laughs> washing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But I mean the kids were going right up and like and, and these dogs look like wolves. <laughs> they're amazing. They're huge and they're you know, and the kids are just going up with no fear. It's like that's great. No. Okay. Great. What? Um, the uh, maps are at the BB kiosk now, and I actually saw them being returned. Oh. Yes. So we're getting used. Cool. That's all. Awesome. I don't have anything to add. Oh. So, oh, go Sorry. ahead. I do have something. I forgot. Um. So I, went, I was out in Horse Hill yesterday, and I have I downloaded the the app from our website. Esri. Yes, Esri, and I was able to pull up you know the Horse Hill map and use it, and it worked really well. It worked great. So, so right now it was really cool. You know, <laughs> Every, I'm like, Oop, where am I now? You know. <laughs> so yeah, you guys are laughing. But <laughs> A novice user of apps and things, you know, and I was like, this works really good. I used the paper and the you know, phone to we, we compare did. the two. We did have people at our uh, <laughs> table at the Winter Carnival that wanted our assistance with helping with the Esri app. Mm -hmm. Good. Good thing you were there. Unfortunately, I could not provide them with the assistance that they were looking oh. for. What, well, what was their question? It wouldn't load or couldn't get to work? What? I, I don't know. Never oh. used it. <laughs> don't have it on my phone. <laughs> don't need it. Cindy, Cindy, so you like, showed me uh, how to put it on. Map support guy. Yeah. yeah, that's right. You pulled. Yeah, you downloaded it. Yeah, you we showed me there. how to put it on. So now yeah. it's on my phone. So. Yeah, yeah we were. The, the, that was, was like one of the first people that came up. So we should send everyone to Gina for tech support. Yeah, no. exactly. <laughs> 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 Done. Done. Deal. Done. Yeah. Right. All right. <laughs> I don't. I don't have anything to add. So motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor. <laughs> okay. So at uh, eight nineteen, we are adjourned.